I just noticed that this episode of Chris Abraham Show, The Chris Abraham Show, formerly known as Chris Cast, is in fact season four, episode 12, Doce, and not 11, as I had mentioned in the, uh, in the show. So I just updated the number and added this, and uh, please forgive me. I'm just a man. I'm just a man. Yay! This is the Chris Abraham Show. Welcome to Season 4, Episode 11 of uh, The Chris Abraham Show. My name is Chris Abraham, and I'm freshly home from my appointment with my cardiologist. And the subject of today's episode is going to be um, carnivore for three months. I was talking to my doctor, Dr. Lux, who's really amazing. And we decided that since I have everything else sorted out, including my heart rhythm, my blood pressure, my labs, and all those other things, it looks like uh, the next step is radical weight loss. So, and as part of that also to work on my inflammation response and that sort of thing, because inflammation is a major part of heart disease and also uh, of everything else, including issues with your joints and I mean, just, and so for the next three months, the next 120 days, the next 12 weeks, um, I am going to be uh, strictly carnivorous. And I'll talk about what that means in the next uh, segment. All right, this is season four, episode 11. Uh, My name's Chris Abraham. This is the Chris Abraham Show. And I am, um, this is the first day. I didn't, I wasn't uh, carnivore today, but starting tomorrow... I can only eat, basically, uh, meat, eggs, bone broth, I guess, and water. Hey, Google, what can you eat uh, on a carnivore diet? On the website health.clevelandclinic.org, they say you eat only meat, fish, eggs, and some animal products. You exclude all other food groups, including vegetables, fruits, grains, legumes, nuts, and seeds. The carnivore diet boasts weight loss, improved mood, as well as blood sugar regulation. People also ask me, is bacon okay on carnivore diet? Want to hear the answer? Yes. On the website chomps.com, they say, meat. Your main calorie source should come from fatty cuts of grass-fed meat like NY strip steak, porterhouse, ribeye, 80 20 ground beef, T-bone, bacon, pork chops, and flank steak. So there you go. And, uh, hey Google, what are some reasons why someone might want the carnivore diet? On the website health.clevelandclinic.org, they say the carnivore diet boasts weight loss, improved mood, as well as blood sugar regulation. It was founded on the belief that high-carb diets are the cause of chronic disease. However, there are drawbacks to eating nothing but animal protein and zero carbs. People also sometimes ask me, why do people choose the carnivore diet? Do you want to hear the answer? Yes. On the website primehealthdenver.com, they say, 
Many carnivore diet enthusiasts claim that meat sharpens their minds. Meat contains nutrients known to help brain function, such as B12, zinc, and iron. Not only that, many claim their mental health improved while on the diet. Without blood sugar crashes, your energy and mental stamina will improve. Fascinating. So, for all those reasons, uh, the only concern that my doctor, cardiologist Dr. Lux has, is that um, people either thrive with high fat meat only diets and you know in three months my blood panels might be better than ever or people's ldl go over 200 and it's not sustainable he said that anybody can eat whatever they want for three months without really hurting themselves and he said in confidence actually you know you can be stupid for up to a year and still be okay. So he said that what we're going to do is we are going to, he's going to encourage me to eat to uh, satiety, satiety, uh, to satiation uh, every day, not to the point where I feel nauseous, but within the comforts of my food. He said that there will be no snacking. He said that uh, with this diet, we're not going to really focus that much on intermittent intermittent fasting. If you get really peckish, you should just have another meal. But you shouldn't snack. You shouldn't eat between meals. If you need uh, two meals, have two meals. If you need three meals, have three meals. If you have two meals and then it comes to the end of the day and you say to yourself, I think I should probably have a meal before I go to bed. He said, don't do it. Just just go to bed and wake up and have your meal when you're ready. Don't even feel it's necessary to have your meal right when you get up out of bed. He said, the first two weeks will probably be pretty hard. He said, and I agree from my experience with keto, that the keto flu is real. And he said that he thinks the keto flu exists because uh, you are... Um, not decompressing. You are, um, Hey Google, what's the term for the sickness you feel after you quit drugs or alcohol? I don't know, but I found these results on search. Well, I guess you are recovering. I'll get it. Hey, Google, what's the term for when you feel sick after giving up drugs? I don't know, but I found these results on search. Withdrawal. So, he said that the reason you feel this keto flu uh, is because you are withdrawing from the things that are put into our diets that addict us. He said that wheat, while it is not GMO, it is radically mutated in order to become uh, more profitable or more nutritious or more uh, sustainable or whatnot. And even though you're in America we're not allowed to GMO, a genetically modify wheat, there's no restrictions on genetically modifying um, corn. So corn can be genetically modified. And I was talking to Mark after the appointment, and he said that um, in places like Australia, uh, United States bread, like bread, like uh, wheat bread and white bread, etc. When uh, someone tries to make that kind of bread, for example, Subway, when they make that bread, um, it it it's not considered bread in Australia. White bread, processed bread, and wheat bread are considered cake. So, uh, and Doctor Luck said that. Um, in many ways, wheat bread 
is not nearly as healthy. The amount of of sugar, of um, of the spike in in sugar, uh, sugar spike in your blood when you eat wheat, American wheat bread is even um, more severe or as severe as table sugar. So what he wants me to do, and I think this is very interesting, one of the reasons why is that he wants to reset my gut biome. He said that there's sort of like two biomes. There's your natural home biome, which you've had since a child, and then there's the biome uh, of the uh, of the gut, uh, the bacteria in the gut that happen as a result of of hungrily eating uh, the refined sugars in our foods. So he said that the reason why he wants me to do the carnivore diet is to try food restrictions. It's sort of like with computers or with code, right? You can't. It, you you need to. Uh, turn off all of your plugins or turn off all of your it's like working on wordpress or 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 linux or server or computer if you don't know what the problem is you turn off all outside services if you restart at bios you can turn it off so that all all extensions are turned off etc this is the kind of thing that he wants me to do so he knows that if I eat plain, fatty red meat and, and grass-fed red meat and grass-fed butter and some fish and eggs and so forth, that the amount of contagion, you know, from carbs and from gluten and from wheat and from grains and so forth will be minimized and um, after three months we can reintroduce things like you know lettuces greens um, broccolis asparagus and stuff like that into my diet but um, he wants to give this an opportunity before we um, start to diagnose the additional foods that might be uh I might have addictions to, or I might have issues with, or my body might respond badly to, etc. So that is the issue. The issue also is that um, he's given me uh, a lot of information with regards to uh, figuring out there have been um, a lot of scientific deductions and so forth that I'm going to learn more about that show that people who have MS and who have um, arthritis and who have uh, diabetes or pre-diabetes or um, all these other things that that keto diets and carnivore diets tend to for some people have very good positive effects to, with them and most of it is because primarily allergic reactions and inflammatory reactions. And those are things that give you, that exacerbate things like MS or celiac disease or Crohn's disease or irritable bowel syndrome or um, diabetes, um, all these other things. And so I'm going to give it a go. I don't know what else to say. Um, Mark my best friend knows me and knows that I'm going to go down the rabbit hole and I will follow up with this in a, in a couple weeks and let you know how it's going and how, uh, how it's affecting me. And I'm also going to take more, um, I'm also going to take more weigh-ins and, uh, I will let you know how it's going. As of now, I believe that I'm 340 pounds Hey, Google, how many kilograms is 340 pounds? 340 pounds is 154.221 kilograms. Thank you. You're welcome. My goal is to reduce to 100 kilograms, which is about... Hey, Google, how many pounds is 100 kilograms? 
Hey, Google, how many pounds is 100 kilograms? 100 kilograms is equal to 220.462 pounds. Thank you. Just doing my job. So that's my goal. My goal is 120 pounds. Um, I think the perfect weight for me, the world says, is 180 pounds. But if I can stay under 220 pounds, which is a uh, 120 pounds reduction, um, I'd be very happy with that. That means that I need to reduce around 50 kilos. So that's basically more than uh, a little more than I basically need to reduce the weight of two 24 kilogram kettlebells. Um, and then we'll be good from there, hopefully. Uh, and that's it. That's where I'm at. T tomorrow I start. Um, oh, I'll come back with uh, with exercise routine that we talked about. The irony is that I mentioned today that I would like to start uh, getting back into my concept too. And we talked about it and without even knowing, he recommended uh, slow, slow running, slow, jo sorry, slow jogging, slow rowing. I read a book called Slow Rowing and it says that you should uh, row uh, 40 minutes to an hour every single day of your life very slowly just sort of, I guess, sort of like if you were to go take a rowboat out with your love and go row out to the middle of the lake and then row the entire lake and be able to have a conversation with your beloved and uh, get from hither to thither and never really start sweating like a pig because how unromantic is that? And never... Uh, get winded because you want to be charming and suave and suave and you want to continue talking to your beautiful someone and so that's what I'm going to do I'm going to aim at uh, doing he said zone two hey Google what is zone two in athletics I don't know but I found these results on search zone two is one of five heart rate zones you can enter when training it usually refers to in, in intensities where your heart rate is 60 to 70% of your maximum with mo most athletes choosing cardiovascular exercise like walking, running, cycling, and swimming to achieve this. Hey Google, what is the Maffetone method, method? I don't know, but I found these results hey, Google, on search. Hey Google, what is the Maffetone method? Here you go. Hey Google, tell me what the Maffetone method is. Methadone is a narcotic. Hey Google, treat... tell me what Maffetone is. Methadone is a narcotic. Hey Google, it tell me treat... what Maffetone running method is. I don't know, but I found these results on search. Here we go. Um, hey Google, what is the Maffetone low heart rate method? On the website marathonhandbook.com, they say the Maffetone method is training using your heart rate. What is this? You perform all your runs while keeping your heart rate below a certain threshold. People also ask me, what is Maffetone heart rate? Want to hear the answer? Yes. On the website strengthrunning.com, they say, created by Phil Maftone, the Maftone method is a style of training that focuses exclusively on aerobic running, using a heart rate formula of 180 your age. So that would be uh, 52. Hey Google, what is 180 minus 52? 180 minus 52 is 128. So that's exactly the number that the doctor said that I should probably maintain. 128 beats per minute, which is 180 minus my age. So that's what I'm going to start doing. And I'm going to do the walking and I'm going to eventually get to slow jogging. But 
Um, I'll start tomorrow with the uh, with the rowing. And then I have it on my calendar to do 10,000 meters uh, every every day. But I should say uh, one hour of rowing every day and not care about how many meters. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to leave this uh, recording and go change it to one hour row every day and not care about the meters. And then be able to see how many meters it ends up being over time. See if I improve over time still uh you know with the relative exertion and see if i go from i don't know 10,000 meters in an hour to 20,000 meters in an hour who knows it'll be very fun to track it and if you want to see that you'll see it on my strava cuz i record those things anyway we'll come right back and i will tell you how to contact me Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. My name's Chris Abraham. This is the Chris Abraham Show, formerly known as Chris Cast. I think this is season four, episode eleven. I was making funny jokes yesterday with the art with the episode I deleted. I was saying ons and once and elf and all those kinds of other words for uh for eleven. Once, doce, trece, catorce. So, this is how to contact me. Chris at Abraham.su Chris at Abraham.su As in Soviet Union. Um, because, with a last name like Abraham, who is the uniter of all three, of three faiths, the uniter of three faiths, he is the... Um, the trunk of the tree from which Islam, Judaism, and Christianity uh, sprouted. So the only way I could find a top-level domain of Abraham is in the godless society of the Soviet Union. So chris at abraham.su. My website is chrisabraham.com. My phone number is plus one two zero two three five two five zero five one. And you can text me or call me or you can signal me or uh, WhatsApp me or Telegram me. Um, you can Calendly me, Calendly.com slash Chris Abraham slash 15, free. I'm at Twitter.com slash Chris Abraham, Instagram.com slash Chris Abraham, YouTube.com slash Chris Abraham, Instagram.com slash Chris Abraham. Facebook.com slash Chris Abraham. Chris-Abraham.com is my Tumblr. And my home base for this podcast is anchor.fm slash Chris Abraham. And all I need to say is I love you and you mean the world to me. And thank you for listening. Don't forget to review, subscribe, thumbs up, hit the bell, smash the bell. Uh, follow me, write a review, comments, donate. And <clears throat> I appreciate it. Merci beaucoup. Um, donc, you well, the donc, zer. Merci bien. Gracias. Muchas gracias. And mahalo and aloha. Thanks very much, and I'll talk to you soon. Thank you for listening to The Chris Abraham Show. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any future episodes. Until next time.